All right. So the last time, well, number one, welcome to the box, people. Um, we are here. Um, so the last time we came to you guys, I believe it's it's been a few weeks, um, but the last time we we came to you guys was to do a tribute to Norm McDonald, which just broke our hearts when he died. And little did we know that not long after we were going to just get hit with a swarm of losses. Um, and, you know, each death is going to be different uh, for each of us um, uh, that are doing this podcast today. So we lost, uh, you know, Betty White, Sidney Poitier, uh, Bob Saget, uh, Gaspard uh, uh, Yuliol, which is from France, um, Meatloaf, and then Louis Anderson. And it has been um, pretty devastating for, you know, a lot of us that grew up in the, you know, 80s, 90s. Um, and some of these people were extremely prominent in our lives, you know. Uh, Betty White, um, you know, we all loved her. Um, and I think today we just kind of want to talk about, you know, some of our, our favorite memories of her. Um, and for me, um, you know, it, she was on the, she was on the Carol Burnett show and, you know, so funny, always funny, always charming, um, always beautiful, right? Uh, she, she seemed to be a woman who always took care of herself, did her makeup, did her hair, um, and was presentable no matter, no matter when you saw her. Um, and so, one of the things that I loved about Betty White was your, I think I was in high school and, and I don't know if you guys remember Chicken Soup for the Soul. Um, there were books that came out were real popular in the United States, but one of them was Chicken Soup for the Soul for Dog Lovers, I think, or maybe for pets. And I remember reading it and I came across a story about Betty White and she talked about her dog that after her husband, Alan died, whom you know, she was married three times, but when she met Alan, it was, it was different, right? And, and sometimes that just happens. And so this dog, when she lost her husband, who, by the way, she was without for 40 years after her death, she had to live without this man for 40 years before she's been reunited with him, I'm sure. And anyway, she talked about how significant that dog was to her that helped her during those times because animals have a way of knowing what you're going through and you can't hide your emotions from them. You might be able to hide it from the world, but you cannot hide it from them. Um, and then there's a TikTok thing where it just kind of shares this really lovely uh, memory of her. Um, Rob, Robert Lipton, Lipton is, I think his name, where he, you know, had the people on stage at the actor studio. And he would say, you know, near the end of um, the interviews, he would say, if heaven exists, what do you think it's like? Or what do you think it's going to be like? Or, or what do you want God to say to you? And she said that she wanted God to say to her, hello, Betty, here's Alan. And just imagine like, this is a woman 40 years without this person that she loved. And I think for me, what um, I love about Betty White is how much she loved everyone and animals and the people around her. And I think that that is what makes her a true legacy, you know, and that's even without the acting. She brought so much attention to, to dogs. And uh, oh, yeah. what, what was that project that was just done the other day? You donate to your local shelter. Uh, I can't remember. I'll have to look, uh, I'll, have to, I'll have to look it up, but um, I, I wonder how well that did too. Well, we'll have to find that. And, well, and I, I heard that. a little piece about how it, it definitely uh, created a uptick in donations to local shelters. So right. talk about a woman that was truly selfless even after, you know. Right. What a, and then when you Googled her name, I didn't realize this. Um, Sunny, Sunny said, Google her name. And it says, thank you for being my friend with all these roses. Yeah, on her 100th birthday, they did that on Google. So that's, yeah, that's the most heartbreaking thing, by the way, oh. is that what was it? Two weeks she passed before her birthday, and I believe it was people that had um, was doing some sort of like special interview, right? Um, so what we did end up getting is we did end up getting, I believe, it was her assistant released um, a final photo, and then also a final video more recently, and. <laughs> She is just the cutest, sweetest little thing. And Lulu, Lulu brought up something which I wasn't even sure 
uh, I even knew about uh, what was the show that you you remember her being on? The Blood and the, Be the Beauty. Oh, the, bo the Bold and the Beautiful. Yeah. Soap opera. Yeah. So. I uh, Go ahead. Well, I was going to say, I remember her the most, obviously, from Golden Girls um, as the slightly dippy. Frozen Island. Yeah. Frozen Island. We talked about saying all off. Uh, I literally her. was just looking at that because um, it literally, um, it says one of St. Olaf's chief attractions is a great, is a great giant black hole with the chance people enjoy standing around and looking at, which prompts Dorothy to refer to St. Olaf sarcastically as the real entertainment capital of the world, which, because all her stories about St. Olaf, like the St. Olaf twins, like there's all these different little stories she tells. And like, it gets to the point to where she brings up St. Olaf and you could just see the other women at the table be like, oh, like here we go. <laughs> there is a great Twitter page that is dedicated just to St. Olaf stories. Right. There's one in particular, I'm sure you guys saw it, where she's sitting there with Blanche and uh, Dorothy. And she goes, uh, she talks about a herring circus. Yeah. And they just not, they cannot keep it together. It's in the bloopers, right? <laughs> no, because I, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, back then they didn't really have like the editing skill i don't oh, remember if it was a blooper or they just like kept it in and they tried to stay professional because right. betty, betty white had made a comment like oh back then you you really couldn't bloop you know you couldn't have bloopers so it was you know you you would catch and she, the same thing on mary tyler moore show where she had said something about once snowflake is so beautiful and delicate and this is way back when you get a bunch of them together and they screw up the whole city and you can see mary tyler moore's like oh <laughs> you cannot keep it together and uh but you know i loved about betty white is her comedy it just like traveled through the years you know right. so like you guys ever see her in the proposal no i never saw that i know i'm horrible with the scene stuff but she 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 kept up she was in in, in hot in cleveland do you guys ever yes. see this um she was great in that so feisty Right, her character was super yes. feisty. El, El, um, I think it was Elka Max. She was, she was feisty. Also, she was in Boston Legal. Um, right. But in in uh, in the proposal, I don't know if you guys ever saw this. Uh, Ryan Reynolds and Sandra Bullock. They did this little clip where Betty White sits next to Ryan Reynolds, and she goes, "Oh, um, I'll have a coffee, black or something." Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. And R Ryan Reynolds goes, Betty, it's it's me, Ryan. I, I work with you, you know. I'm an actor. And she's like, when Betty White says she wants a coffee, Betty White gets a coffee. And you're an awful assistant. <laughs> it, was, it was something like that. And he like, <laughs> he like tells her off. And then Sandra Bullock comes in and he goes, Sandy, you know, she, she's so mean to me. And Betty's like pretending to cry. And she, like, as Sandra Bullock's walking her away, Betty turns around and is like... <laughs> and he, wait, wait, wait. Doesn't she flip him off or something? Well, maybe she flips him off. Yeah. <laughs> like, Betty my, White is such a badass. My favorite, one of my favorite things with Betty White, and I will never see it and not love it, was when, during the Super Bowl, she did a Snickers commercial. <laughs> and that was when it was like, here, hungry have a Snickers and so what it is is a bunch of guys playing football and Betty White basically gets tackled by this guy and so when she stands up it's like 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 Kevin what's going on you're playing like Betty White out there and so Betty White's character says really that's not what your girlfriend said last night <laughs> and, or maybe your mom or whatever I think it's the girlfriend and so anyway um some of these clips um I we will have on um you know, uh, uh, when we put this on YouTube, we'll have some of these links, um, especially that Alan one uh, where Betty White um, said that she wants his, you know, that she hopes God says, here's Alan. So um, just we'll to add, she was in actress in 126 shows and movies. That's amazing. Like, you know, and she started off as a model. That's how beautiful she was. Like, oh, she, yeah. Have you yeah. seen some of her? Uh, oh, 
yeah she was re- super you know with the dimples and everything you know just she absolutely you know gorgeous you know you know she even did voices for king of the hill and spongebob what i didn't i never knew that king of the hill it says that i believe this was the episode where hank takes his mom to see the um the miniatures apparently ready you ready for this apparently, the cranky ben, one? betty white played all three of the older women dorothy ellen and uh delia i didn't know that either so whoa, 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 wait what so so she played the mom's friends the characters of the mom's friends or did she play hank's mom too what was hank's mom's name tilly no she didn't play tilly um she played the friends and i think she also played in a separate episode delia was the woman that kept trying to die in in hank's house during christmas (laughs) remember yeah that was betty friggin white i I never even knew that how did i miss that that's insane yeah now that you're saying it, it's like I can almost see her name written those yes. white letters at the end. Now that you're saying it, like, how did I ever miss it? She was in so many things, like, I, I just but hands I, down. What was your favorite Betty White thing? She was also a Mama's Family, by the way. Um, yes, loved her on Mama's Family. Yeah, I I think personally, uh, Rose will always be like a whole mood for me my I remember my mom watching it when I was younger and I used to think oh god like what is she watching like what is this and I just it was it was it was amazing I loved it because I was like at first it, it just looked like to a kid this is gonna be boring it was so funny man all of them they were my friend like you know they were your friends you know what I'm saying like Blanche Rose Dorothy Sophia like all these four four ladies living together just causing all kinds of ruckus right rose was like blanche was like the 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 horny lady always trying to get it you know (laughs) but did you know that betty white was originally supposed to be blanche no i didn't know that till you told me that i didn't know that yeah yeah but it didn't it ended up working perfectly you know oh i think it worked out perfectly because I don't think nothing nothing against Rue McClanahan, but I think Betty White had a way of sharing um, lines. Like just like she was, her timing was excellent. And you the know, way- every one of the actresses on that show were phenomenal, but Betty White, there, it's Betty White. Like she, and she'd been acting for years and years and years. And the thing is she never took acting classes. She never did anything. It was all, you know, shooting, you know, shoot from the hip. Absolutely fantastic. And, and her acting abilities. You know, it blows my mind. It's okay. true. Uh, I know I will wrap it up. Um, but it reminds me of Norm Macdonald. Remember when I said, I really think the greatest, greatest comedians can act so dumb. You know how Rose would act like super dumb. So yeah. you'd be like, well, you know, what a dumbass. I'm telling you that literally is an ability because she, Betty White is obviously she is like intelligent. Her timing's Those perfect. Things. The fact that she didn't take acting classes, super talented. She's in a league of her own, and like for her to come off like that daft, like oh yeah, the Just girls absolutely could- like you know they shared a scene to me that was almost felt very heartbreaking. But on TikTok, um, there's a scene, there's this thing where she's Rose Nyland. She's sitting at the table, and it's her birthday. And she goes, and you know, um, it's tradition. I always get the rose. And so, and she starts cutting the cake, but it looks like she's sitting there by herself. And there was something about that that broke my heart. Like just because he, like Rose Nyland was at the end of the day, a very loving character, like so, like a heart of gold, much like Betty White. Like, you know, and the fact that she was able to do so many of these characters, you know, I remember the Mary Tyler Moore show and my grandmother watching it. Like, and like, that's something tremendous because like, ge- like it wasn't just one generation of people that knew her. And I saw this thing, I just want to share real quick, but it's this meme and it said, imagine living 99 years and the world thinking it wasn't long enough. Like live your life in such a way that if something were to happen to you, the world would think it wasn't long enough. 
you know, that's beautiful. Like, you know, we should all be living like that. People on Twitter yeah. wrote for years. Every time Betty yeah. White was trending, people got nervous. Like, please. Oh my God. I, yeah, Betty all of us. Betty White. Yeah. And you, I just have to add, Betty White was a comedic genius, but she also could do drama. She also oh. could tug at your heartstrings. And you know what? I've never heard in the 99 years, like Sonny said, I've never heard an ill word spoken about Betty. Betty being this or Betty, be, it was always good. She was truly a golden girl. Yeah. And I want to say, well, before I say this, Lulu, did you want to add anything? I just want to add one thing. Yeah. yeah. Go for it. yeah. Because I just found it and I think we need to mention it. She was fighting for a lot of causes, but she was also fighting for LGBT rights. And she said something, one thing, and I need to like, she said that, so I'm just going to repeat what she did said once. Yeah. She said that if a couple has been together all the time, all that time, and there are gay relationships that are more solid than some hetero, heterosexual one, I think it's fine if they want to get married. I don't know how people can get so anti-something, mind your own business, take care of your affair, and don't worry, I will over people so much i didn't know that yeah i didn't know that either um wow. I, I wanted to share a quote by betty white um and it says i know it sounds corny but i try to see the funny side and the upside not the downside i get bored with people who complain about this or that it's just such a waste of time um and then i like this too i just make it my business to get along with people so i can have fun it's that simple and I just think if more of the people in the world were like, you know what, I'm just going to push through it. And it, because the thing is, we're not going to like everyone, but like for Betty White, no wonder so many people loved her, you know, like, like to have that, you know, it's, it's true. Oh, oh. And then um, I think everyone needs a passion, whether it's one passion or a hundred, that's what keeps life interesting. And it's just... You know. She was a very intelligent woman, but I just want to go back really quick to, I didn't know that she fought for uh, LGBT rights. And you could see, you could see it in Lulu's face when she was reading it. Like you, you felt, you felt some pride there, you know, like that touched you. Right. Yeah. So yeah. That, I, that's Betty White, man. Uh, so you guys want to wrap it up? Uh, you have anything else to say? Um, I just wanted to share, this one's funny, but it's, it's, I just think it's kind of hysterical because we all know that, you know, Betty White was um, an older woman, right? But it says, people have told me, Betty, Facebook is a great way to keep in touch with old friends. At my age, if I wanted to keep in touch with old friends, I'd need a Ouija board. <laughs> <laughs> and I, just, I had a shirt, I thought that was so funny. So I want to say, I want to thank, thank Betty White for all the years of laughter, tears, sharing her uh, genius with us, um, for being such an amazing person. And I want to send our prayers and thoughts with her family and friends, her fans. And I want to really say, Betty White, thank you for being our friend. We love you. <laughs>